In this video, Phil gives a thorough walkthrough on how to use conditional formatting in tables and matrices in Power BI Desktop, including using background and font colors, data bars, icons, including your own custom icons, as well as creating clickable hyperlinks. Let's take a look. Conditional formatting allows you to draw attention to or highlight data in text or numeric fields using color, icons, or data bars. You can also assign URLs to fields to make them clickable and load web pages. This video goes through the conditional formatting options you have for table and matrix visuals. To apply conditional formatting to the performance data, click on the down arrow here in the values, and then in conditional formatting, you get a little pop-up menu. You can see that you can apply background colors, font colors, data bars, icons, and a web URL. So let's start with the background colors. You have three different format styles, a gradient, you can set the style based on rules or on a field value. We'll stick with gradient for now. You can apply your coloring or your formatting to values only, values and totals, or totals only. I'm just gonna stick with values. Now, what field should we base this on? Well, I want it on performance and the summarization or the aggregation, which is probably a better way of phrasing it. I'm going to stick with some, but as you can see, you can choose average, min, max, and so on. If you have values that are empty, how should you deal with those? You can choose not to format them at all, treat them as zeros, or set a specific color. I'm just going to leave it as treat them as zeros. With a gradient, you set your minimum value to one color and the highest value to another color. And everything in between is a shade of one of those two colors. You can change the lowest and the highest values to custom values. But I'm just gonna stick with the defaults, lowest and highest. You can also add a middle color. The default's pretty ugly. So I'm just gonna leave that out and we're just gonna go with the minimum and the maximum. So if I click OK, this is what I get. If I want to remove the conditional formatting, click on the down arrow again beside the uh, column name in the values well. And then under remove conditional formatting, you can either choose to remove a specific formatting. Uh, as you can see, background color is bold and the others are grayed out or dimmed. So there's no formatting for these four here. So I can either choose all to remove all formatting or just click on background color to remove that. Now if I go back in again, conditional formatting, background color. If I choose rules this time, and we're gonna apply these again to values only and leave the field as performance, leave the summarization or the aggregation to sum. Now let's just have a quick look at our values here. So I wanna set the colors based on the numbers that are in this column. Now, if you don't know the exact numbers you're dealing with in terms of the lowest and the highest, you can just choose to set that to min. Now you can choose to use percent or numbers here as the the way that the uh, formatting is set. Let's just go with number for now. I'll come back to percentage later. So I'm saying if the value is greater than or equal to the minimum number in this column, and it's less than, let's say 0.4, then let's set that to red. Then if the other values are greater than or equal to 0.4 and number, and less than, let's say 0.4, Eight. then we'll leave that as blue for now. And then if the values, all the remaining values are greater than or equal to 0.8 and less than the max, let's make that a green. And I'm just gonna choose a custom color here because I don't have green in this palette. So select green, move the chooser around till we get something, yeah, that'll do. And then click okay and it's the formatting using rules. Now I'm gonna show you how the conditional formatting works when you use rules and percentages. I'm gonna use this slightly simpler table because it illustrates the point uh, a bit more clearly. With percentages, the percentage is worked out based on the range you have from your lowest to your highest value. So in this table, two is my lowest value. And that is treated as the zero percent and eight is the highest value that's treated as 100%. I'll set conditional formatting for the value column here and choose background color. And we're gonna go with rules. So if greater than or equal to 0% and less than, let's say 35%, 
We don't like that, so make it red. Add a new rule. If greater than or equal to 35% and less than, say, 75%, leave that at light blue. And then finally, greater than or equal to 75% and less than or equal to 100%. Want that as green. That'll do. Click OK. Now I'll just bring up the rules again so I can explain what's happening. So 2 is 0, remember, 0%, zero and 8 is 100%. So if we go from 2 to 4, we've gone one third of the way to reaching the maximum value of 8. So 4, in this case, is 33%. Likewise, 6 is two thirds of the way to the maximum value of 8. So 6 is 66% and 8 is 100%. So 2 is 0, 4 is 33%. They are both less than 35%. They're both colored red. 6 is 66%. So it's less than 75. It's light blue and 8 is 100%. So it's treated as green. So just remember when you're applying percentage based rules like this, that the coloring will be applied based on the minimum and maximum values in the column. Okay, let's look at field values now. How do we add conditional formatting using a field value? Well, if you select field value in here, it asks which field should we use? I'll look in my data table and nothing. That's because what it's actually looking for is a measure. So I have to create a measure in the data table. And what this measure does is specify colors to use based on whatever rules you decide. So here's the measure I've already written. What it's saying is, if the data performance value is less than 0.5, then color it red. If the performance value is less than 0.75, color it light blue, otherwise color it green. So I'll hit enter to just save that. Then back in the table, I'll go back into the conditional formatting for the background color. Change this to field value and now I can choose my conditional formatting background measure and click OK. And doing it this way it's much easier to change your formatting if you need to because you can just go and change the measure. You don't need to worry about editing the conditional formatting rules. So let's say I want to choose rather than light blue let's just call it grey. Hit enter you can use any color that's a known CSS color, uh, like the ones here, which are known names. You can also use hex colors, RGB, or HSLA. Let's say I want to change this red to an RGB color. Then I'm just going to specify the red, green, and blue components. So 204 red, 0 green, 0 blue. Hit enter. And my red is a little bit darker little bit easier on the eye. Rather than grey, I'm going to change that to orange. And rather than specifying the CSS green, I'm going to use a hex color. So that's specified with hash and then it's a six digit hex code for the red, green and blue components. And I'm going to use 75 AD 21, which I know is a green. And as you can see, the hex code is not case sensitive. Okay, so that's background colors. What if we want to change font colors? Let's jump into conditional formatting for the font color. Now I've already written a measure to use with the field value. So if I choose conditional formatting background again and choose OK, now the font is colored exactly the same as the background. In some cases, this could be quite useful if you just want to see a good visual indication without seeing the numbers, you can do it like that. If I remove the background color formatting here, you can see that the fonts are colored based on the measure. So with the font, you can set the conditional formatting in exactly the same way as the background color. You can choose gradient, you can choose rules or the field value as I've already shown you. If you want to use data bars, then go into data bars. Here we can show the bar only. I'll come back to that in a second. We'll leave that off for now. 
you can choose your minimum and maximum values using the lowest and highest values in the column or you can specify custom values. I'll just leave the defaults. You have one color for positive bars and another color for negative bars. So let's choose red for that. It's a bit, bit more obvious. And bar directions left to right for now. The axis is black and that's just the dividing line between the positive and negative bars. We click OK. It looks a little bit busy. So let's just jump in. Go to data bars and now I'm going to check show bar only. And that's a little bit better on the eye. If you want the positive bars on the left and the negative on the right, then go back into data bars and choose bar direction right to left. Next is icons. So I'll just remove these data bars first and then go to icons. So with icons, you can set these rules, or these conditional formatting rules based on rules or based on a field value. A lot of the similar options as you have for the background and the font colors, you can set them to values only, values and totals or totals only. This formatting is being applied to the performance column and the aggregation we're using is sum. You can choose to put the icon on the left, on the right, or have the icon only and no data values. And you can choose your icon alignment, top, middle or bottom. And you get to choose from all of these lovely default icons. So I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. As you can see, there's already rules set up for me. And I'm just going to go with those. And if I want to get rid of the actual numeric values, go back into icons and choose icon only. If you've got a column with a wide title like I have here, performance, you can always double click the name there and just type space. And now you've just got a narrow column, which can help sometimes with layout. So that was how you can use the inbuilt icons. You can actually use your own icons as well, but you need to use a field value for this. You need to write a measure. So at the moment, I haven't got a measure that will do this. So let's go and write that. I'm going to create a new measure. And of course, I've already written this. So I'll just copy and paste. So my measure is called CF icons, conditional formatting icons. It's another switch statement. And what it's saying is if the performance value is less than 0.5, then load that icon bad.png. If performance is less than 0.75, load neutral.png. Otherwise, load good.png. So you can use ICO icon files, PNG files, JPEGs, or GIFs. I'm using PNGs, as you can see and they need to be on some web accessible location like a website. Press enter. Now if I actually go and set my rule, choose field value, choose the CF icons measure, click OK, and they are my custom icons. And the last thing I want to show you is you can set URLs or assign URLs to values. Now, let's say I want to link out to some information about each of the cities. If I click on conditional formatting for the city, click on web URL, you'll see that it requires a field value. So I need to write a measure for this. So right click up here, new measure, pasting in the measure that I've already written. What it's doing is for each city name, now you have to use an aggregation, so I'm using min. If the city is Berlin, then this is the URL I want to link to. If it's Denver, then link to that one, and so on and so on. Press OK, and in the table, I can now set the conditional formatting web URL, and choose CF URL, click OK. You'll see that I now have links out to the pages for those cities and clicking on those links will load those pages in your web browser. Okay, so that is a good run through of conditional formatting in tables in Power BI and you can do the same kind of things with matrices also. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know below the video. Thanks. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.